Good morning to all. Today we are dealing with plaque control. What is plaque control? Plaque control is the removal of dental plaque on a regular basis and the prevention of its accumulation on the teeth and adjacent gingival surfaces. What is the need for plaque control? Plaque is defined as a structured, resilient, yellowish gray substances which gets attached to the intraoral heart tissue surfaces including removal and uh, fixed processes. So any cessation of plaque control practices for at least 7 to 21 days this is an accumulation of thick plaque on tooth surfaces red and gingiva that bleeds easily shift to more virulent gram negative flora changes that are completely reversed in about 7 days when plaque control practices are resumed. So there is a need for both professional and home care oral hygiene aids. So ADA has recommended tooth brushing twice a day and intradental cleansing once a day. Then comes the target hygiene. That is, we are targeting the area that is the dendrogingival junction. It is an anatomical and the functional interface between the gingiva and the tissue structure. That is the region where the tooth is get attached to the gingival. So that is formed as soon as the tooth erupts in the oral cavity. So that is the dendrogingival junction. So plaque control efforts will be mainly supragingival area that is mainly to decrease in streptococcus in plaques for prevention of caries by removal of it and limitation of the dietary sucrose. Then by removing the supra subgingival plaque, they will be maintaining the gram positive flora by removal of plaque. So if each tooth is to be brushed for 20 strokes, it will take at least two minutes to cover all four quadrants. How to detect plaque can be by direct visual, disclosing solutions and by using probe. For supragingival, mainly direct vision. For subgingival, can be tactile perception, radiographical, air blow or fiber optic transillumination. Then comes the disclosing agent. Disclosing agent is an agent which contains dye that is used to stain dental plaque on teeth, tongue, gingiva and thus makes it fully evident to the patient or clinician either with regular or UV light. It can be available as solutions and wafers. It is used as an educational tool for patients to improve the efficiency of plaque control. So it can be erythrosin, bismarck brown, berbromine, fluorescein, fission, two-ton dyes, so which is used to differentiate between mature plaque and immature plaque. So mature plaque stains is blue and immature plaque stains is pink, then fast green. So these are some of the examples for disclosing agent. So this is uh, mainly used for visualizing the plaque and also for patient education. Then methods of application of disclosing agent. It can be a direct application that dry the teeth with compressed air retracting cheek and tongue. Use swab or small cotton pellet with cotton pliers to carry the solution to teeth. Apply a solution to the crown of the teeth only. Direct the patient to spread the agent all over the area with the tongue. Okay, examine the distribution of agent and request the patient to rinse if indicated. For rinsing, few drops of concentrated preparation can be placed in the rubber cup and paper cup and water is added into it in an appropriate dilution. Instead, the patient to rinse and switch the solution all over the tooth surface. For tablets or wafers, patient should chew the wafer of tablets, which is it around 30 to 60 seconds and ask them to rinse. Dentifices containing this disclosing agents are available now. It's very useful to remove the dental plaque. Then comes the mode of plaque control. As we said, there are home care cleansing aids and office care cleansing aids. Okay, under home care cleansing aids, we have mechanical plaque control. Under that, toothbrushes, tongue cleaners are available. Under interdental cleansing aids, dental flows, burn tips, interdental brushes, oral irrigation devices, gingival, gingival massage, chemical inhibitors, under that, mouthwashes and dentifices. Under office care, we have mechanical plaque control, sonic and ultrasonic devices, or irrigation devices. Then comes the toothbrush. Toothbrushes, they are of different types, manual, powered, ionic, sonic and ultrasonic. Parts and objectives of a toothbrush. Parts consist of handle, sham and brush head. Brush head consists of toe, heel, bristle ends and the planes. 
So it can be used to clean teeth and indented the spaces, to prevent plaque accumulation, to stimulate and massage gingival tissue, to clean the tongue. ADA has prescribed a range of dimensions for acceptable brushes. So this is very important ADA specification, which constitutes brush length 1 to 1 to 1.25 inches length, brush width 5 by 16 to 3 by 8 inches width, surface area 5 2.5 to 3.2 centimeter, 2 to 4 rows, 5 to 12, 12 per row, and 80 to 86 bristles per tuft. So different types of bristle materials are available. So natural bristles and artificial filaments. As you know, the nylon filaments are more superior in comparison with the homogeneous material, uniformity of bristle size, resistance to fracture, repulsion of water and debris. Natural bristles are significantly more susceptible to fraying and breaking. So contamination with bioluted microbial debris, softening and loss of elastic. Then uh, two brushes have been classified according to the diameter of the bristle that is soft, medium and hard. Then soft bristles are flexible to reach further into proximal area. Hard tissue bristles are associated with more gingiva recession. So to maintain cleaning, or cleaning effectiveness, two bristles must be replaced as soon as the bristles begin to fray. Approximately, we would tell that it should be replaced once in every three months. Okay, some other conditions like if the bristles are flattened after one week, that means the brushing is vigorous. If the bristles are still straight after, even after five months, either the brushing is done, done very gently or the brushing has not been done properly. Okay, or it, it has not been used every day. Okay, some advancements are there like blue dye and bristles are available now. The dye fades with use, which helps in reminding the patients to replace their toothbrushes. Then comes the power toothbrushes. Indications are children. It is commonly used in children and adolescents. Children with physical or mental disabilities, hospitalized patients, patients with fixed orthodontic appliances. Then comes to the mechanism of action. Oscillatory and rotating motion. Sound waves uh, which interferes with vibrations, which interferes with material adherence to the teeth. Hydrodynamic shear forces which disrupts biofilms, interproximal biofilm removal, then acoustic energy to enhance cleaning ability. So that is the energy created uh, with the mechanical vibrations. So these are the mechanism of action for power brushes. Then they are available with different motions. So power toothbrushes, these are some of the examples uh, that are available in the market, power toothbrushes that is available in the market. So Oral-B, professional care, we have with the circular motion, we have Scylla, Rotodendus. Okay, in the plaque, Oral-B, Rotodendus, so many uh, power toothbrushes are available in the market. Then comes the sonic and ultrasonic toothbrushes, which produces high frequency vibrations and cavitation and acoustic micro streaming. So it mainly depends upon the physiological effects of water flow. That is acoustic streaming is a unidirectional flow caused by ultrasonic, ultrasonic waves. And acoustic turbulence that is created by the, when the movement causes the coolant to accelerate, which produces an intensified swirling effect. This turbulence will uh, continues and which forms the water bubbles and after a point with a high turbulence, this bubbles implode and produce shock waves in the liquid, so which creates the uh, breaking of the dental plaque, so which aids in stain removal also and disruption of bacteria cells. So sonic and ultrasonic toothbrushes, we have like so many uh, brands available in the market. So then comes the ionic toothbrushes. Ionic toothbrushes are mainly uh, depends on the principle that opposite poles attract each other and similar poles repel each other. So this ionic toothbrushes, they, are, they will provide this uh, surface charge of tooth by an influx of positive charge ions. So as the diagram shows, that is uh, this Positively charged packets attached to the negatively charged tooth surface. So when the uh, ionic toothbrushes, uh, when they are applied, so it will change the surface charge of tooth by an influx of positively charged ions. So plaque with the with a similar charge is uh, is repelled from the tooth surface and is attracted by the negatively charged bristles of toothbrushes. So this is the principle behind behind the ionic toothbrushes. 
So tooth brushing methods, a number of uh, tooth brushing techniques have achieved acceptance by the dental profession. Depending on individual cases, the technique of tooth brushing may have to be altered to achieve the maximum beneficial effect. All tooth brushing methods mainly consist of four basic motions or their combinations. So according to the mode of action, they have been classified into different brushing techniques that is uh, a roll method, modified Stillman technique, vibratory uh, Stillman charters bus techniques, under circular fonts technique, under horizontal scrub technique, under vertical motion, Leonard's technique and under physiology split method. Under scrub technique, that is horizontal method, as the name indicates, like it's like 90 degree to supply 90 degree to the tooth surface. It is moved back and forth motion, but the drawback is that which results in tooth abrasion and gingival recession. Then comes the fonts technique or circular method. It's mostly indicated in young kids. Okay, so this ask them to make a big circle outside the mouth. So then ask them to just make smaller, smaller circles and to make the same circular motion inside the mouth or with the tooth surface. So that is the brush is firmly pressed against the teeth and gingiva. Bristles are at right angles to the buccal surface. So they will give a circular motion four to five times on each set of the teeth. Then comes the physiologic method. So bristles are pointed incisively or occlusively and then moved along and over the tooth surface and gingiva. So it's like sweeping motion. So the principle is that physiology pathway that is followed by the foot when it traverses over the tissue during mastication. Then comes the vertical technique. So vertical stroke is used. Okay, that is from upward to downwards. Okay, maxillary and mandibular teeth are brushed separately. Bristles of brush are placed at 90 degree to the facial surface of teeth. Brush vigorously without great pressure, mostly up and down strokes. So usually happens uh, that type of vigorous type of brushing uh, for this vertical technique. So advantage is that very convenient and the teeth for small children with the serious teeth. But disadvantages are in the dental space of permanent teeth are not properly cleaned. So then comes the bass method that is vibratory technique. So this is the method that is most often recommended because it emphasizes the placement of bristles at its most important area as we said before that is the target hygiene area. So it's mainly aimed at that area so that is why it's most recommended. Okay, and the circular placement of the bristles and adapting the bristle steps to the gingival margin to raise the supragingival plaque biofilm and accessing some of the subgingival uh, biofilm also. So that is why it's more important. So as the diagram indicates, the place the head of the soft bristles at the gingival margin, establishing at, as an, at an angle of 45 degree to the long axis of the teeth. Strokes are repeated around 20 times, 3 teeth at a time. On the lingual aspect of the anterior teeth, the brush is pressed into the gingival sulci and proximal surfaces at an angle of 45 degree. So occlusive surfaces are cleaned by pressing the bristles firmly and then activating the bristles. So exert generally gentle vibratory pressure using short back and forth motions. So without dislodging the tips of the bristles. So it is re re recommended for the routine patients. So main indications for circular cleansing, periodontal health, for periodontal disease and for periodontal maintenance. Then comes a modified bass method. So just uh, like it gets modified in the way that it has sweeping motion from cer cervical to incisor or occlusive surface. So indication is a routine oral hygiene uh, measure in raw circular cleansing. Advantage excellent sulcus cleaning, good interproximal and gingival cleaning, good gingival stimulation. Disadvantage is the dexterity. Stillman's method or uh, that is also vibratory another method like it's vibratory technique. So this is as the diagram indicates the pointing in an apical direction at an oblique angle to the long axis of the tooth. So that is the brush should be placed with the bristle lens resting partly of the cervical portion of the teeth and partly on the intestine gingiva. It's more towards the gingiva. Okay. So the brush is uh, activated with 20 short back forth back and forth strokes and is simultaneously moved in a coronal direction also along the attached gingiva, the gingival margin and the tooth surface. So this process will be repeated in all tooth surfaces around the mouth. So it's recommended for the patient with gingiva recession, 
and root exposure to prevent abrasive tissue destruction. So that is why it is more directed towards the gingival. So more uh, like with the gingival stimulation, gingival massage. So it's recommended in patients with gingival recession. So modified Silman's mother, that is a roll technique, that is the sides of the bristles are firmly rolled against the gingiva in a coronal direction. The sides of the bristles are pressed against the teeth and gingiva while moving the brush with short back and forth strokes in a coronal direction. Then comes the charter's method or vibratory technique. So this is uh, the other another uh, vibratory brushing technique. So a soft or median multi-tufted brush is placed on the tooth. With the bristles pointed toward the crown at a 45 degree angle to the gingival surface. So this is just opposite to the bath technique actually. This is 45 degree angulation to the gingival surface. Okay. The bristles are generally manipulated into the interdental spaces with small clockwise circular motion with bristle ends remaining stationary. To clean the occlusal surface, bristle tips are placed in pit and fissures. So this is mostly recommended for gentle plaque removal and gingival massage. Okay, and this is mostly ideally used for the orthodontic patients actually and for the patients after flap surgery, after periodontal flap surgery and the patients with open spaces or wide embrasures and also with fixed partial changes. So these are some of the modified bars, modified stillman and mod modified charters methods. So common thing is that there will be a roll stroke, roll tufts occlusally in a vertical motion after cervical area is cleaned by the prescribed method. So cleaning of the entire facial and lingual surfaces. Then comes dendrophysis. Area defines, identifies as a substance used with a tooth brush for the purpose of cleaning the accessible surface of the teeth. So it is derived from dance meaning tooth and record that meaning to rub. Okay. So it's available as toothpaste, gel, to powder. Ingredients, it can be divided as active ingredients and inactive ingredients. Under active ingredients, we have abrasives, antibacterial agents, desensitizing agents, anti-tartar agents, enzymes. So some of the uh, like agents you can just buy hard like under abrasives, we have silicon oxides, aluminum oxides. Under antibacterial agents, we have triclosan fluoride, desensitizing agents, potassium nitrate, anti-tartar agents, sodium pyrophosphate, enzyme xylitol. Under inactive ingredients, we have water medium detergent, sodium and chloride sulfate, surfactant agents that to remove uh, food debris and binding agents. We have sodium magnesium silicate and colloidal silica. Humectants that is to retain the moisture. We have glycerin and sorbitol. Flavoring agents, peppermint oil, wintergreen and under preservatives, benzoic acid. So then comes the interdental cleansing aids. For ideal plaque control, tooth brushing should be supplemented with aids that assist in cleaning in the proximal surfaces. So it can be dental floors, interdental brushes, wooden tips, rubber tips. So factors in choosing an interdental cleansing aid mainly depends on the contour of the tooth, the consistency of gingiva, size of interproximal embrasure, tooth position and alignment, ability and motivation of the patient. So, uses are to clean a narrow interdental space, to stimulate and massage gingival tissue, to clean and open purgation areas, to clean the fixed processes and orthodontic appliances, mechanically stimulating the papillary gingiva, stimulate blood flow, squeeze fluid from the gingival sulcus, effectively cleaning around bridges, braces, and wide interproximal spaces. Then comes the dental flows. Flossing is the most widely recommended method of removing plaque from the proximal tooth surface. It can be either twisted or non-twisted, bonded or non-bonded, waxed or unwaxed, thick or thin. Then comes the spool flossing method. It is recommended in adults. So 12 to 18 inches usually sufficient uh, for flossing. Stretch the flow tightly between the thumb and four fingers or between the four fingers as it is shown in the diagram. Pass it gently through each contact area. Flows must contact the proximal surface from line angle to line angle to clean effectively. A firm back and forth motion should be there. 
Factors influencing choice of tendal flows are tightness of contact, roughness of proximal surface, and manual dexterity of the patient. Different types of dental flows are available. We have flows holders and disposable uh, dental flows is available. So super flows that is with variable diameter flows that is with foam like with terminal a segment of stiff plastic. So which can be inserted beneath the FPD tight embrasure or open embrasures. Then comes interdental pressure. These are cone shaped bristles, brushes made of bristles mounted to the handle. It can be single tufted brushes or small conical brushes. These brushes are suitable for cleaning large irregular or congee tooth surfaces adjacent to wide interdental spaces, highly effective on lingual surface of mandibular molars or premolars. Then comes the rubber tips. It can be firm rubber or plastic. Shape of the tip is conical. Usually the tip plays proximally, which can rest the side of the cone on the gingiva, which can be activated by applying pressure with a vibratory or rotatory motion. So this procedure is done uh, on both facial and lingual sides in both in open embrasures and uh, furcations. Wooden tips, triangular in shape that approximates the shape of the interdental area. The tip is inserted into the interdental space. The base of the triangle which rests on the gingiva and sides are in contact with the proximal area. The function of wooden tips like mainly limited to the facial surface of anterior teeth. But with the introduction of this perio aid stimulant that is available with the handles. So this can be used to clean both facial and lingual surfaces of all teeth. Then comes the recommendation of interdental cleansing aid, which depends upon the type of embrasures. We have type 1, type 2, type 3. So the different interdental cleansing aids will be recommended. For type 1, that is intact interdental papilla with narrow interdental space, dental flows or small wood, wooden stick is preferred. And for type 2, moderate papillary recession with slightly open uh, interdental space, dental flows, wood stick or small interdental brush. And for complete loss of papilla, that is with type 3, with wide open interdental space or in some varying case like wide embrasure space, diastema, extraction diastema, furcation or posterior surface of most distal molar, root congivities or grooves, grooves interdental brushes uh, can be like single tufted or end tufted brushes or bow strips, it depends upon the case. Then comes the gingival massage. Epithelial thickening, increased keratinization, and increased mitotic activity in epithelium and conjunctive tissue. That is what uh, like gingival massage is aimed at. So, which emphasizing the importance of altering or removing the plaque rather than stimulating or thickening the keratinized surface in the plaque control program. Then we have oral irrigation devices can be used either supragingivally or subgingivally. Supragingival irrigation, it is performed with dilute and deceptive chlorhexidine. Daily, we can use for at least for six months, which resulted in a significant reduction in bleeding and gingivitis. The common home use irrigated tip is a plastic nozzle. So we have a home care oral irrigation device also, for example, jet sprays, water flows, okay. So, which is available with a plastic nozzle with a 90 degree bend at the tip. So, attached to a pump to provide pulsating pressure. Now, a mechanism of action of oral irrigation it can be pulsation or continuous stream. Under pulsation, like impact zone and flushing zone are created. Impact, impact zone is a zone in which the solution initially contacts, and flushing zone in which the solution reaches the subgingival sulcus. The outcome of hydrokinetic activity of the, both these actions will be the subgingival penetration. So it's mainly seen in subgingival irrigation. The other one is the continuous spray. So we can see in the diagram that impact zone, whether that is applied, okay, flushing zone where it's reached, okay, that is in the subgingival area. So that is the flushing zone. So subgingival irrigation, which is performed mostly in dental office. Okay, at home that is by site specific tip and pit tip. Okay, particularly antimicrobial agents are used. Irrigation done in dental office that is called lavage or flushing the periodontal pocket. So, subgingival irrigation after scaling and root planing may be helpful in reducing bleeding and pocket tips. So, then we are dealing with chemical plaque control. 
Rationally of chemical plaque control brings diseases under control. It is used as an adjunct to mechanical plaque control, influences plaque qualitatively and quantitatively. It simplifies home care oral hygiene. Mechanism of action by inhibition of plaque development, by elimination of existing plaque, by inhibition of calcification of plaque, inhibition of microbial colonization on tooth surfaces. Modes of application of anti plaque chemicals, routine oral hygiene aids, mouth rinses, dendrophysis, gels, chewing gums, periodontal dressing, subgingival eradications, varnishes, and lozenges. Ideal plaque control should have substantivity, penetrability, selectivity, stability, solubility, bioavailability, accessibility, and ionic interactions. So, out of which the most important one is substantivity, that is, ability of an agent to bind to tissue surfaces and be, should be released over time. So, chemical plaque control agents have been classified according to its action as anti-adhesives, anionic polymers, antimicrobials, plaque removing agents, and antipathogenics. According to its composition, it has been classified bisganide antiseptics, quaternary ammonium compounds, phenols and essential oils, natural products, halogens, Methyl salts, oxygenating agents, and detergents. Under bisbenide and antiseptics, chlorhexidin and alexidins. And under quaternary ammonium compounds, we have cetylferidinum chloride and benzylconium chloride. Under phenols and essential oils, we have thymol, eucalyptol, triglosan. Under natural products, sanguinarin and propolis. Under halogens, sodium fluoride and sodium monofluorophosphate. Metal salts, tin, zinc, copper, oxygenating agents, hydrogen peroxide and sodium peroxyborate, and under the detergents, sodium lauryl sulfate. Conman 1986 has classified this chemical black and agents according to a substantivity and antimicrobial activity, mainly three generations. First generation, phenols and essential oils, certain antibiotics, enzymes, quaternary ammonium compounds, fluorides, oxygenating agents, natural agents, methyl salts. So which is having substan zero substantivity, about 20 to 50 percentage microbial reduction. Second generation, there is substantivity 25 to 50 percentage with 70 to 90 percentage reduction. So bisveganides and bisperidins. Okay, third generation that is amine alcohols or uh, that is under that optopenol and dalmopenol substantivity 0% and which bl blocks the microorganisms. Next comes chlorhexidin which is very important. It was developed in 1940s by Imperial Chemical Industries England. It was marketed in 1950. Structure cationic bisbionide. Structure two bigonide groups and has a symmetric four chlorophenyl rings connected by a central hexamethylene chain. Most common oral preparation is chlorhexidine gluconate. Other than that, chlorhexidine acetate, chlorhexidine dichlorinate, and chlorhexidine hydrochloride. Success of fluorexidin is due to the following characteristics, efficacy, safety and substantivity. So it's considered as gold standard by the property of substantivity which binds with hard and soft tissues and is slowly released over time in a concentration. Then comes safety, a very low level of toxicity. Then comes efficacy, antimicrobial activity which lasts for 12 hours. So it has bacteria settled property which again has perambicitive and gram bacteria. Advantages are, it is used as an adjunct to oral hygiene. It can be used in mentally and physically handicapped patients, in uh, orthodontic appliance wearers, in medically compromised patients. It can be used as both supra and subgingival irrigation, in recurrent oral ulcerations and aerosol reduction. Most effective antimicrobial agent for long-term reduction of plaque and gingivitis. So that is why it is considered as the gold standard against which all other topical chemical plaque control agents. So it is used for post-operative rinsing, post-operative healing, root caries, disinfectant, candida infections, even against viruses like corona, hepatitis, HIV. Area accepted chlorhexidine as an antimicrobial and anti-gingivitis agent. 
So before going to the details of mechanism of action, pin cushioning effect, we need to know what is pin cushioning effect. Dicationic chlorhexidine molecule which attaches one to tooth surface and other to the bacteria which trying to colonize on the tooth surface. So which leads to the prolongation of the bacteriostatic action that which lasts for 12 hours after a single rinse. So, interaction of chlorhexidine with sodium lauryl sulfate and fluoride contained in the dentifrices. So, that is why there, there should be 30 minutes lapse between the tooth brushing and the mouth rinsing. So, that is why otherwise it will be affecting the effic efficacy of both agents. Mechanism of action of chlorhexidine which is very important. So, it has anti-plaque action and antibacterial action. Under anti-plaque action, which prevents pellicle formation, prevents absorption of plaque onto the tooth surface, prevents binding of mature plaques. Pellicle prevention that is attaches to the salivary proteins and desquamated epithelial cells, which blocks acidic groups on salivary proteins, and finally it reduces glycoprotein adsorption onto the tooth surface. Second one is plaque adsorption prevention, that is prolonged antiseptic release. So, which leads to the bacteriostatic action that is which lasts for 12 hours due to the pin cushioning effect which prevents the adsorption of bacterial cell wall onto the tooth surface. So, thereby which reduces the plaque adsorption to the tooth surface and third one that is the prevention of mature plaque formation. So, that is the, this chlorhexidin which competes with the calcium ions so which blocks the agglu agglutination of plaque. So, which displaces the calcium from plaque matrix. So, thereby which reduces the maturation of plaque formation. Then comes antibacterial action. So, under that bacteriostatic at lower concentration and bacteriocidal at higher concentrations. At lower concentration, chlorhexidin a bicationic positively charged molecule. So, as the diagram shows that is it is positively charged molecule. So, it attaches to negatively charged sulfates and phosphates on the bacterial cell wall. So, positively charged chlorhexidine will be attached to the negatively charged sulfates and phosphates on the bacterial cell wall, which alters the integrity of cell membrane. So, that is where the, here it is. So, which alters the integrity of cell membrane and binds to the phospholipids in the inner membrane. So, which increases the leakage of adenosine triphosphate nucleic acid, which increases cell permeability, and there will be leakage of low molecular weight, uh, weight com components for, for potassium, and the subliminal stage of fluorexidin, uh, so it can be reversed. So, this is the lower concentration that is the bacteriostatic action. So, that is the subliminal stage of fluorexidin. So, that is the, it can be reversed actually. Then comes the higher concentrations. So, as we said before, the positively charged molecule will be attracted to the negatively charged phospholipids in the cell wall. So, this the diagram shows that chlorhexidine binds the cell wall causing into rupture. So, as, as we said, at the higher concentration, it will be gets adsorbed on the cell wall. So, it will lead to like progressive damage to the cell wall. So, larger molecule compounds are lost and coagulation and precipitation of cytoplasm. So, vital cell activity ceases. So, then it leads to cell death. So, cytoplasmic leakage happens which ruptures the cell wall causes fluid to leak uh, leading to the cell lysis and death. So, that is at high concentration. Clinical applications. So, it is available as mouth rinses, irrigation, gels, chips, etc. So, under mouth rinse, we have 10 ml of 0.2 percentage rinse that is to be switched 30 seconds time and 15 ml of 0.12 percentage and 0.1 percentage available that is to be used for 60 seconds and 0.12 percentage chlorhexidine twice daily and 0 0.05 percentage that is available uh, now and chlorhexidine irrigation that is 1 percentage subgingival irrigation is available chlorhexidine gel 0.1 percentage, 0.2 percentage, 0.12 percentage, 0.5 percentage and 1 percent gels are available. So, these are the common chlorhexidine mouth rinses available now. Parox, Corizuril, Peridex. So, ADA recommendation one is Periogard. 
then chlorhexidine spray is available that is 0.1 percentage and 0.2 percentage spray chlorhexidine toothpaste that is 1 percentage paste with or without fluorides chlorhexidine chewing gum that is 5 mg of chlorhexidine diacetate then comes the chlorhexidine local drug delivery as we said that is called perio chip okay that is 2.5 mg of fluorhexidine gluconate is available so that can be used as local drug delivery then comes side effects of fluorhexidine. These are some of the common side effects. Brown staining, bitter taste or taste disturbance, oral mucosal ulceration, uh, unilateral or bilateral parotid swelling. So these are some of the uh, clinical photographs of side effects. Then we are dealing with some of the other uh, uh, chemical plaque control agents. Under that, some of the important one that is Listerine, which is a combination of phenol related essential ions, thymol, eucalyptol mixed with menthol and methyl salicylate in a hydroalcoholic base. Inactivation of enzymes, that is the main at low concentration, the main mechanism of action. Then disruption of cell proteins at a higher concentration. Then comes the enzymes which is capable of degrading intermicrobial cementing matrix of plaque and thereby disrupting the framework of bacterial colonization. Then comes the antibiotics as we said it depresses microorganisms, triclosan, broad spectrum antimicrobial agent, anti-inflammatory property which inhibits cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase which decreases uh, leprostaglin in E2 and leukotrienes. Oxygenating agents which deliver antimicrobial agents into periodontal pockets retards plaque accumulation which reduces bleeding on probing and pocket depth. Sanguinarian that prevents plaque retention. Frequency of plaque control. Toothbrushing twice a day with proper brushing technique is recommended. Actually, intertendal cleansing once a day. Chemical plaque control twice a day that is uh, 30 minutes after brushing that is a mouth rinsing. Patients education and motivation is very important for maintaining the oral hygiene. So like take more fibrous food, brush regularly after meals, choose better toothpaste and soft brush for better cleaning, avoid sticky foods in between meals, meet your dentist every 6 months. So let's conclude that plaque it must constantly be recalled is not inherently pathogenic. It constitutes a fundamental component of the natural commensal human microflora. The human bimicrobial biofilm which needs to be managed, not eliminated. So that's all for today. Thank you.